we're going to link to the acquirer's net income. So we go to the acquirer's standalone model and we select the net earnings in 2018. Then we go to the target, select the target's net earnings in 2018. And finally, we go to the pro forma model and select the pro forma net earnings in 2018. So what you'll notice right away is that the acquirer's net earnings go from 33 million to 43 million, a huge increase percentage wise. But that doesn't necessarily tell shareholders if they're better off. They need to look at how many shares were issued and see how much their earnings per share have changed as a result of the transaction. So we can start by referring up here to the acquirer's shares outstanding. I'll anchor that with F4. Then we can loop in the target's shares outstanding, anchored with F4. And finally, what we can do is calculate here the number of shares that are issued and the pro forma shares outstanding. So the share issuance price is going to be equal to the acquirer's share price times 1 minus any discount that it may have to be issued at. Now, this is just an assumption. You could put it to zero, so there's no discount, 1%, whatever number. It's just an assumption to see if there might have to be a discount as part of the negotiation of getting the deal done. So the shares issued is going to be equal to the value of stock divided by the issuance price. So what you'll see here is now we've got pro forma shares outstanding equal to the starting number plus the number issued, which is 73,238,000. So we can link that here. And we can anchor it with F4. So what you'll notice is, yes, the earnings increase significantly, but the shares outstanding increase significantly as well. Then we can calculate the earnings per share. We just take each one and divide it by the number of shares respectively and fill down. And then what you'll notice is we can calculate the change. So the pro forma EPS divided by the acquirer's original EPS minus one gives us that percentage change. And as you'll see in the initial year, it's actually dilutive. The company actually has less earnings per share the first year after the transaction than they did before. Let's copy and then paste here as formulas those numbers. But what we can see is that as these synergies kick in, as synergies kick in and interest payments go down because debt's being repaid, those two forces in particular drive significant accretion over time. And what you can see is that by the year 2022, the pro forma company has earnings per share of $1.18, whereas they would have only had in the original model earnings per share of $0.94. Cents. So in that sense, and that sense alone, this transaction makes the shareholders much better off longer term.